Добрый день, уважаемые Good afternoon, distinguished guests, the guests of our studio. Traditionally, winter business season every year starts with the Gaida Forum, Russia and the World Priorities is the topic of this year's forum. We are going to talk about uh, provision of pharmaceuticals. Let me introduce to you our speaker. Sergei Glagoryev is Deputy Minister of Health of Russia. And uh, Timofey Nizhegorodsov, he is the Deputy Head of Federal Anti-Monopoly Service. And let's see how we will structure our discussion. I will introduce to you the results results of our project, which we implemented uh, last year, and uh, we'll discuss the proposals and uh, to prepare our audience for this discussion. First, let me say that generics and biosimilars in Russian Federation account for a major part of uh, all the uh, pharmaceuticals, uh, money-wise 60 percent, and the total amount of them is uh, much higher. And of course, like they say, uh, my neighbor's grass is greener. We always think that something is better in other countries than in ours. Let's look at other countries, how they commercialize uh, pharmaceuticals, what foreign experience can be extrapolated in Russia with some benefits. So, first let me tell you about the study uh, we performed. Preliminarily, we understand that there is no ideal health system worldwide. The, the population is aging, the lifespan is increasing, the health care system models are changing, and each country is trying to find its own best model. But this means that we have to look for a new models all the time. We have to compare them. We have to look for the best tools to prolong the life of our citizens. Let me first get my presentation on the screen. So we had a project implemented. In the framework of this project, we studied the structure of the systems of making a drug available in the market. We are talking about generics and biosimilars in Russia, but we will also touch upon the uh, public procurement of pharmaceuticals uh, because we have to discuss it. Here you see the geographic map and we looked at the countries in which health system models can be comparable to ours. There are some models that can hardly be implemented in Russia. And we analyzed the unions, the European Union, uh, Eurasian Economic Union, CIS, and of course they give certain preferences. Uh, and uh, now we can see the official open data. We see how you worked with this data source. Here is how we broke down the process, the whole chain. It starts from GNB inspection. And in order to think uh, how the chain in this process works, uh, how the supply chain works, and uh, we need to analyze how we can improve the accessibility of uh, generics and biosimilars to our population. The key findings uh, are already there, because in December last year, here we had a similar study, and uh, we were invited to the Ministry of Finance and so on. We explained uh, all the uh, 
aspects of implementation of the project. And let me tell you what I mean by this slide. Here you can see the a cost of withdrawal. Russia is a unique country, even at the national level. Uh, Russia uh, is uh, uh, willing to be number one in terms of uh, uh, in terms of launching new biosimilars uh, or generics uh, on a regular basis. So we have Russia and we have European Union countries, and this means that there is still a lot to be done. And what we see here. Here. We see here, and when I, I will tell you about our key findings, I will comment the data. Talking about the deadlines and timing, we see that the Russian Federation in terms of meeting the deadlines uh, is doing very well, but still don't forget when we speak about the European Union, about OECD countries or whatever, we see uh, how we can improve the system of uh, conclusions. Okay, now let me tell you the final conclusions. We thought for a long time how we will uh, present these uh, uh, conclusions. We chose uh, Leonard da Vinci and uh, just imagine this uh, like a standard and we can uh, uh, see the suggestions made by our group and here is the main uh, here are the main suggestions number one we need to reduce the deadlines for having clinical studies done, also for multi-center clinical studies, we should try to avoid wasting time in this process based on our estimate uh, the uh, deadlines for issuance uh, of paper material can be reduced at least by half. And this is what we would like to show to you uh, on graphs. We understand that this mechanism works very well for those uh, who are... Uh, it, it works very well. And if in one country a study was made, automatically the results will be validated and accepted in other countries. GMP procedure, 278 days, and you spend a little. And there is another conclusion which we drew when we were comparing the whole process step by step. It's GMP procedures performed together with the registration. In other countries, this is done in parallel. In Russia, this is a consecutive. Uh, con consecutive uh, action and uh, let me ask you yes we do have this uh, rule in Russian Federation but it works in uh, Russian Federation in a special situation. And here we know that uh, there is a uh, list, a list which has been approved, a list for accelerated uh, registration of pharmaceuticals so that you don't have to wait. And we analyzed public procurement of medications. In the Russian Federation, there are 
a number of rules which will uh, which are always discussed uh, and in the European Union and the barriers like this uh, are sometimes non-existent and these barriers have to be lifted and last but not least we have still two suggestions number one is joint public procurement of pharmaceuticals we see that in Europe already several countries group together to buy pharmaceuticals поэтому это опять же отвечает собственно задачам и выводам нашего исследования итак so, dear colleagues, now let's talk about brief results of the discussion. My discussion will be split into several questions. You saw the suggestions worded as conclusions, but first please give us your general assessment and here you will prepare you will prepare the changes work on changes word them and enter into the system distinguished colleagues first of all I would like to thank you for quite a wide study I had an opportunity to Thank you. Uh, and uh, generics are a basis of any developed health system today. On the one hand, they are available. On the other hand, generics can release funds uh, which are necessary for ensuring better access for other pharmaceuticals. And of course, uh, if we are talking about the buyer similars market, uh, we should mention switching to standards of European Economic Union, which happened in которые готовятся нами, относятся к подачам uh, All this goes back to 2020, but at the same time the number of Eurasian registrations and generics in absolute figures is growing about 700% growth. And this means that latest uh, assessment of uh, 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 assessment uh, will be made to confirm their therapeutic equivalence. And the key element uh, is availability of the public trust in generics medicine as such. On the one hand, we have to stand firm and defend the criteria of access. On the other hand, we need to have mechanisms for synonymical or non-synonymical replacement, which usually requires uh, more time. Uh, now, what is necessary? to be done in this way. Of course, number one is implementation of the legal practice of the European, uh, of the Euro Eurasian Economic Union. And we are currently upgrading the registration mechanisms such as uh, uh, notional registration, uh, and others fast track 
типов лекарственных средств, такие как детские терапевтические формы. For instance, if we take children's therapeutic forms, pharmaceuticals, yes, we do need such help. And by the way, the therapeutic efficiency of biosimilars, we have to understand that there are some drugs that are hardly replaceable. What else should be taken into consideration? On the one hand, we need to digitalize part of what we do. On the other hand, we need to create standard instructions uh, to the uh, standard instructions. And if we talk about the cost of launch of a pharmaceutical in a market, first uh, we wanted to see uh, what we have uh, in European clinical studies, we need to see the uh, registration uh, fee and many other things that require additional uh, studies. And I would like to thank you for this all-round uh, study. And in any case, uh, the study results will be uh, uh, discussed uh, separately. Uh, and uh, if we are talking about, of course, on the one hand, we have to understand that the more generics and biosimilars we have, the lower the price will be. Especially I'm talking about very low generics price. So if we summarize what you said, we will agree. The need for the fast track and use Eurasian uh, standards uh, for beer equivalency, also post-registration procedures for synonymic replacement and centralization of uh, purchases and procurement uh, within certain framework. Uh, about the mutual um, confirmation, there are a few moments. Any talk about this should be led uh, based on the reciprocal approach and mutual approach, uh, providing potential control over clinical studies if we consider such opportunity in foreign markets. Far from being normal that uh, countries with developed systems are able to provide high quality and uh, authenticity of bioequivalence. The second element I should stress is the need to develop our domestic sphere of clinical studies and providing access of Russian specialists, of Russian healthcare specialists to uh, medicines so, uh, and uh, quite complicated beer similars. Thank you very much, Timofey. Same question to you. I'd like to repeat it. General evaluation of the results. Um, you get acquainted with them. We send you the materials. And basically, once again, what of the proposals we made, what of the conclusions we drew uh, are doable or not doable? We will separately discuss it. What should be done additionally? Yes, thank you. First, that I wanted to point out is that the data you are now uh, bringing and giving in uh, comparing our system of registration with different countries or unions tells us that our registration system looks quite good, decent. And if we compare uh, those systems, uh, in the data you get, there's none of the critical outlier which would allow us to say that our medicine registration system has some vulnerabilities. Of course, there are some things which would look, well, which would uh, need additional uh, finalization. But it's obvious that uh, in terms of uh, 
uh, expenses uh, and uh, terms of uh, registration procedures, we are uh, uh, in a good middle uh, class, so if we may evaluate it like this. I have to tell you that the central issue of um, uh, generics uh, availability and biosimilars availability in the healthcare system is the question which rather depend not on the registration procedure, because uh, the biosimilars registration, generics registration is a uh, rather standardized approach and process in all countries. It uh, doesn't differ a lot, and they don't differ a lot. Of course, there are some orphan um, and pediatric forms, uh, there are special procedures, or there are special post-registration studies in order to add new evidence uh, the company uh, reveals after the medicine is uh, used in big populations. And just to fix it and to confirm it, the company can open additional procedures, additional preferential modes, which can be embedded in the registration system. But this all is ra rather a manual fine-tuning of the system, which uh, does not prevent, in general, the uh, market development. The central question and the central issue of uh, availability of biogenerics and biosimilars in the healthcare system is the non-discriminatory access to, of these medicines to the healthcare system. And this is not uh, an issue. It's not the issue of registration. Of course, registration is important, but um, it's important not from the expert uh, opinion point of view in confirming therapeutic equivalency of these uh, medicines versus originals. But this is rather the reflection of those expert evaluations in different medical documents, such as uh, state register of medicine, uh, different kind of uh, lists um, uh, regulating participation in, in uh, public procurement systems of the healthcare system. Of course, our country has problems related uh, not with the registration, but with reflecting these documents in uh, these information in all those documents. When we look at those documents, we can see, despite that there were strict requirements in Russia that, this, uh, that reproduced medicine should be registered in the same dosage, in the same form, but since they are reproduced, uh, their reflection, uh, their prescriptions and um, uh, should not be different from originals, but uh, still there can, could be differences and significant differences. It creates a signal in saying the health care which can be used by unfair players of market and uh, the healthcare system to dilute registration bodies, controlling bodies, and, um, well, uh, um, uh, fine-tune and aim these competitors and remove competition in the market. It looked quite strong in the beginning of notice in the 1910s, in the early 10s, and we started to upgrade our legislation in those days. But so far, we see that like uh, uh, different registers uh, that we do have, uh, GRS, GRPORTS, and uh, ASGLP, and uh, other uh, registers, um, different lists which accompany other state programs, they could not match in, in between uh, in respect of information which uh, um, describes uh, medical drugs. I mean here also different producers of uh, generics and uh, originals. There's a huge versatility, and this diversity um, determines the regime of uh, circulation and discrimination of uh, these medicines because it gives an opportunity to unfair uh, public procurement companies uh, to uh, well have biased prescriptions in different situations and insisting of they remove competition and provide benefits for certain companies, and it is also supported by certain participants, by certain medical experts who could come uh, without discussing therapeutic goals, just and say, well, this is additional, this, this medicine has additional substances uh, which were not confirmed uh, during registration, but nevertheless they are there. They can say that, you know, this is the difference which is which really matters, and let us probably uh, use this uh, medicine in, in a different mode, in a different regime. And of course, this discussion is clear. All countries of the world uh, which um, uh, implemented the program to improve the healthcare systems, to improve the affordability and availability of medicines, they all passed through.
all those problems and this struggle. And, uh, well, we also go the same way and uh, we have uh, some victories, some failures uh, on this way. And uh, I absolutely agree with Sergei, apart from one thing, one small thing. I uh, was uh, glad to hear that we are at the same page in terms of uh, our strategic goals for our healthcare system. And the strategic goal of the healthcare system is to improve economic efficiency of the system, to improve affordability and availability of the system for uh, patients. But this could be achieved only by developing and by enhancing registration and um, uh, use of uh, reproduced uh, and analogous medicine. This is only one way. And Sergei mentioned that there is a generic uh, generic system of healthcare which supports on generics. But there is also uh, another system. Well, in this way, well, uh, assuming that there is some different system which is based on originals, right? But Sergei, just let me finish. This discussion, I understand. This just a, a reservation by fruit. Well, but, but again, this is an artificial discussion which was imposed, been imposed for a while and is still being imposed by international producers, by companies who produce original medicine and who continue use this marketing to promote these uh, medicines uh, and they continue to state without justification and they've been punished in different countries. There are a lot of investigations underway, but they still keep uh, stating that generics have different safety profile, different performance profile, sometimes different quality profile, and they build their sales on that. They build the sales of uh, their uh, original uh, medicine, original products. It was not a problem if uh, uh, medical uh, uh, personnel and patients were not involved in this discussion. And the artificial conflict appears in the healthcare systems, inside the system, between the players, and it all um, is uh, to the detriment of the system. You know, the only uh, way to uh, get away of this fog and uh, to clarify the situation, that was uh, probably to reduce, the, the way to reduce this tension and uh, to provide non-discriminatory conditions for biosimilars and reproduced medicines is, of course, to improve and to strengthen the surveillance in this regard, absolute uh, confirmation of uh, expertise uh, results at all stages, because now we see the situation when while registering uh, medicine, the registration body completely confirmed the identity and uh, in terms of circulation, well, doctors, they shall, shall have doubts, and these doubts are not provided by post-registration clinical studies or expert observations. Well, especially when there is a break, the pause in this uh, uh, issue, when nobody explains anything, this anxiety starts to uh, transfer, be transferred to patients. And this is uh, very bad, and we should pay a great attention to this. That's what I wanted to say in addition to the proposal which we just heard. Just micro comment in addition. Probably I was uh, expressing my thoughts not in the right way. I um, meant that generics is a foundation is the water and antiseptic and uh, the air of the healthcare system and two-thirds of financial um, uh, means uh, provide availability of new innovations. This is the only thing that uh, is there. The, each generic uh, used to be an innovative uh, uh, medicine, but the majority of innovative medicines are uh, protected by patents and uh, they are subject to uh, the control when changing the platform. And the key element for us is to build up uh, public trust to the generic institute in the market. We see huge gaps in information, popular information support about what is this and why generic uh, in the majority of cases in its efficiency doesn't differ from the originals. Well, as for the non-discriminatory conditions, in the most part is can be cured by standardizing information, and we are dealing with this due to use of digital resources. That's first, description part, and second, the instruction part. And the third thing, uh, nevertheless, it doesn't matter if we are solid or here or not, any non-discriminatory conditions can exist in the perimeter which is guarded by normal, adequate, modern regulatory requirements to access uh, generics to the market. 
and the competition should be fair between safe uh, medicines. But this would be a, a trauma, an injury from the very beginning, right? You still access, you, you still you still understand, but uh, if there was a difference, a statistical difference in the uh, safety and prof efficiency profile, then it should be registered. It shouldn't have been registered and shouldn't be acknowledged as an original medicine. As a regulator with this supervisory profile, which uh, someone would uh, blame me, uh, I should say that we have to be absolutely loyal and we should should uh, have this presumption, the assumption of uh, 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 the punishment here. And we passed it many times uh, at stages of uh, certain applications which we received on synonymic uh, replacement. We have uh, the digits in hand and we are able to compare and we will improve the resolution from year to year. The profile of clinical efficiency of different uh, trademarks, also the originators and generics. Okay, what should be done if uh, the originator safety profile is worse than uh, generic? And why do you believe that uh, this, um, well, this concern should uh, be uh, uh, directed only to the reproduced products? Uh, you remember Rostrov Nadzor made the checks and uh, verifications. Uh, sometimes the profiles of originals could suffer and they can be even recalled from the market. The whole series could be withdrawn from the market. In this regard, out the profiles of efficiency, they should uh, they should use the same approach as both generics and uh, originals should enjoy the same standard procedures and standard concern towards all producers, both who produce originals and reproduced ones, because medicine is uh, a safety is an unsafe substance. They should be efficient. There should be high quality and proper quality, and uh, equal attention should be paid to all players in the market. Now we speak about the rigid perimeter, which allows only a specific quality of originators and generics. Taking the situation when the originator could be worse than uh, the generic subordinate to it, we cannot exclude the situation. For instance, replacement of uh, uh, press equipment for micro dosages uh, or uh, old uh, outdated technologies could um, deteriorate the situation. Then the process goes on. Um, they develop new generics when the generic is not being approved, but have, but gets access to other markets not available for the originator. And this issue also desires to be handled. Also, the in uh, um, incentivizing this issue should be considered. Again, as a regulator responsible for the quality and safety and pricing, I, uh, I'm not able to differentiate requirements to the originator and reproduced medicine. But uh, is it worth doing to differentiate? No, no. Of course, no. Let's stay with the unified approach. Now we smoothly move to the different question uh, from we, we have uh, studies, we have results, we have things we agree. And once again, as a summary, what can you say about it? Yes, we understand all the conclusions we made. Uh, once again, since that was uh, uh, being studied in the focus group, uh, I mean GMP plus uh, marketing authorization Yes, this really requires relations uh, and requires collaboration with the Ministry of Industry and Trade. That's right. That's about the logic of the procedure itself, because you understand that both procedures have to be complied with, without which no marketing authorization can be issued. And we understand that it takes time. You know, each synchronization and standardization is a positive thing. And and it's strange if someone's against it. But we really have to pay more attention to these processes. And when we are talking about mutual acknowledgement, uh, you know, the clinical studies made by foreign uh, companies in Russia are accepted uh, as valid by all jurisdictions. Uh, no one will. Uh, 
которых uh, 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 no one will uh, really uh, interfere with our regulatory authorities uh, to list the clinical studies made in our country to verify uh, their process and so on but we are not talking about any international treaties and uh, since we have this kind of practice uh, in our country so we have to pay more attention to synchronizing access to international clinical studies when a company is planning an international clinical study the company should apply for permission in all the jurisdictions in which the study will be performed and the Ministry of Health should validate the process uh, it's not that we have 50 days uh, for uh, finalizing this process and we will give you the marketing authorization only on the 49th day of course not so that the corridor so that the time uh, frame for issuing permissions uh, and we should not make companies make clinical studies that they have already made uh, in other countries uh, we compare the maximum deadlines for issuance uh, of permissions and secondly uh, talking about the local acknowledgement of studies uh, it's uh, valid uh, we, we have this uh, new legislation of the Eurasian Economic Union and uh, if we are not talking about orphan drugs but uh, about uh, traditional international multi-center clinical studies we need to promote the participation of uh, Russian companies as well in these studies so what do we have to do? First, I think we need to preserve the current requirements to local clinical studies performance. And on the other hand, we are fully open to a fruitful dialogue with foreign regulatory authorities. They do not understand what the problem is about because they do acknowledge the validity of foreign-made clinical studies. We don't. Talking about generics and bias similars it's a very sensitive topic and we still insist on Eurasian Economic Union legislation uh, and there is no problem to issue one clinical study site it takes time and you have to make it in these time frames for the international multi-centers clinical studies and then there will be no big problem with the mutual acknowledgement of validity of the study results yeah of course our task is to accelerate the process it's about local red tape it's an internal issue that needs to be dealt with at the level of those uh, authorities that receive inquiries uh, and issue relevant uh, decisions yes so this means that we have to initiate uh, the change in the process or uh, regulation yes at least uh, a document should be issued uh, asking uh, the bureaucrats to take less time in issuance of these documents. You know, when uh, drugs, uh, when, when clinical studies uh, do, uh, are not made in Russia because of non-compliance with the deadlines uh, on our side, that's a pity. Yes, we do have certain deadlines, administrative deadlines in our studies. 
мы там проводим этот самый Normally we perform economic analysis, but there are times when the auction starts, for instance, and you have to make it on time. You have to make, uh, you have to receive a decision on the price so that the company be able to participate in the auction. And we fully understand that this is a very good cause and we prioritize such uh, inquiries so that the company is asking for the price quotation be able to participate in the auction in good time. And we see this as a very, very important thing, and this doesn't really require any new laws or whatever. It can be solved at the administrative level because the final maximum deadlines are okay. The thing is that we should just somehow regulate the administrative red tape so that these permissions for conduct of clinical trials are issued in less time. That's it. Okay, let's see it once again, the spy chart that we already discussed with you. We already discussed it, uh, and like we said here, it's a good thing, and we should prioritize uh, this. And here we confirm that we are ready to try to improve the situation with the issuance of the permissions for the uh, clinic clinical trials, and also our focus is to accelerate the issuance of marketing authorization. We have accelerated authorization, yes, and we are already trying to integrate some of the elements of the system into the basic law. We are now preparing a lot of information on the topic. Plus, don't forget, it's about 1,000 pages we are analyzing, and we will issue a guide, a guidebook of about 100 pages, not more, which will be of use to you so that we can continue collaboration. And as a final discussion today, here is what I suggest we discuss. What else can be done? Uh, we had discussions in the focus groups. Uh, we discussed with manufacturers these topics uh, and this question about reference countries. This is an interesting topic. Uh, due to our joint uh, efforts uh, uh, together with Federal uh, Anti-Monopoly Service, we performed a very important uh, work uh, on referencing uh, the periodicity of revising reference countries is not yet decided on, but the focus groups uh, uh, study showed that there are uh, reference countries uh, lists that have to be revised from time to time. It's not me who started this discussion that we need need to be more serious in our efforts to replace uh, uh, drugs uh, by locally manufactured ones or generics. Uh, the other question is, uh, final question, what can improve the accessibility of generics and uh, biosimilars? It's not a problem of reference countries. Usually the reference countries are the countries that will always be in the list 
list of reference countries like France, for instance. Well, we hope that Russia will be included in the list. You know, our company is unfortunately often are not very careful with the information they enter in the um, uh, dossier uh, documents. Uh, many companies uh, live like in a different world where data are not global, where data are atomized uh, in a certain jurisdiction and not available to anyone else outside this a jurisdiction. For instance, in, in Poland, the price of the drug uh, you manufacture, uh, the price is two times lower. You say, no, we do not supply uh, our drug to Poland. Can you prove this? Uh, you have to send information to the regulatory uh, agencies uh, of uh, re the relevant country about this. It's not that we are based on some fake data we found somewhere in the web. No, we are based on information coming from regulatory agencies. If you stop dealing, stop trading with some country, you have to notify the authorities about it. And if you know that this will affect the pricing in the Russian Federation, this is a must. And very often, what we see, a company all of a sudden sees it and starts doing something to save the situation. Yeah, I remember this discussion about Turkey, for instance. You know, Turkey is not usually used as a reference country, and the drugs market is also a very expensive one. France is one of the most popular reference countries, not Turkey. You know, uh, there are several very interesting and several interesting myths that the drugs are cheapest in Turkey. That's wrong. Well, sometimes Turkey is used as a reference country, but in very selected specific cases, not in a regular basis. Now let's talk about our achievements. Over the past 10 years, we created quite a serious uh, stimuli system favoring the penetration of generics and biosimilars in the Russian market. We had crazy discussions when we were just creating the system. Now, we are allies with the Ministry of Health in terms of our attitude to biosimilars and generics. We have the same attitude to them in terms of expertise. Now what? So, the whole system, which is based on international non-patent uh, trademark uh, and is based on description of the procurement item, we open the list, we, we have special lists of generics and biosimilars uh, by markets, and we see that annually we register 20 first generics. 73 first generics were registered in 2020, for instance. Now, the ratio of uh, registered uh, drugs, uh, we see that 80% of manufacturers of generics being registered in Russia come from the Eurasian Euro uh, Economic uh, Union. And this is good. This is good for the stability of the system so that we can withstand any external shocks. And this is about marketing authorization, state procurement, and company. We allow the companies to register generics, hoping that we will have easy and quick access to them. And I think this is a big, big achievement for us, and we are telling our colleagues all around the world 
talked about it, we have registered 14 biosimilars that are not registered anywhere else in the world. These are the most expensive and the most high-tech uh, pharmaceuticals worldwide, which means that here in Russian Federation, we have the best access to pharmaceuticals worldwide because we have registered in Russia 14 biosimilars which are not registered anywhere. It's imiglucerase, insulin, certain insulins, omalizumab, ecolizumab. All, the, all of them are registered in Russia and nowhere else. And these drugs, uh, they are really very efficient and they make a big contribution in treatment of our patients. And they are better than, uh, you know, this kind of uh, the system shows that our system is open to generics and biosimilars and is based on them. This is the key finding I can share with you. Okay, last question. Uh, what else do you think should be done? We should uh, deal with standardization. We should improve our practice. We had a meeting in the ministry and uh, the uh, handling and the auspices of the minister, and we decided to devote this um, um, year to breakthrough standardization and end-to-end -end standardization of all our registers, uh, NDLP and other um, abbreviations. So all these lists should be um, um, should be aligned, and uh, as a result, we will improve uh, situation with discriminatory practice in different uh, medicines. We cannot speak in general about discriminatory practice. We always should mention specific medicines. Second thing, we should be based on uh, the real clinical practice, and the real clinical practice not only a Russian but international um, market. We see more and more differences. Uh, in this practice when using insulins especially and we see more and more differences from the international practice and on our opinion is not good we have special instruction and we do hope that uh, the results of this clinical practice which are reflected and which influence the access of biosimilars in the markets and to remove to eliminate this discrimination would improve the practice will come closer to the real clinical practice and should be reflected in clinical recommendations because uh, a certain uh, medicine turnover regimes and prospects to register these medicines depend not only on the registration procedures but on how and in what regimes those uh, medicines be used in this real clinical practice what is reflected in clinical recommendations and uh, what is written there on uh, the circulation of these good drugs and this would determine the uh, destiny of uh, these medicines not only the registration procedure registration procedure is just a gateway and after the gateway after the gate in the field, uh, there's a different story. And this story, in principle, determines whether you are allowed to access this market, this town, through this gate. And this is the second big thing. Sergei, you have the floor to you. Now pass the floor to you. What else can we do together in order to improve uh, affordability? Um, if we take basic uh, things which we didn't mention, of course, information standardization, what was already been mentioned, next thing, niche, uh, low margin generics. We should create systems to simplify their access to the market by centralized procurement, not only federal procurement, but probably create special marketplaces where um, the entities or individuals or companies can find uh, suppliers uh, because the deficit, the most part of the deficit comes from this informational mismatch. Uh, one more thing is, of course, developing uh, digital uh, turnover, not only in generics, but also creating institutes, digital tools, which would allow to modify the uh, uh, medicine supply system. The key thing for us now is to 
improve the resolution of the general picture, multi-layered picture with federal uh, national calendar, 890 uh, regional uh, law on uh, subsidy 178, and uh, eliminate doublings there and um, understand what is the quality of uh, this medicine supply. It's clear that medicine supply always require additional funding, but we should use it only in response to uh, proper measurable results of uh, medicine use, uh, life expectancy improvement, uh, reduction of chronic diseases, uh, diabetes, uh, vascular diseases, well, and, and, and so on. And if we, and when, in the nearest time, when we see this picture in a very great detail, we can start discussing uh, schemes and uh, approaches how to improve it substantially in the strategic, from the strategic point of view. Of course, we have some pilots to uh, replace in Kirov region. We have wonderful digitalization pilots of subsidized uh, medicine in Belgorod. But we have to get results of those pilots. Will you share the timeline? We should analyze them first. If, of course, with pleasure, we can invite uh, uh, the managers from uh, uh, healthcare institutions. And uh, then we need to implement it uh, on the federal level, in federal initiatives. Yes, one year ago, we discussed it with Kirov uh, uh, governor, and we discussed first results. We have a lot of results already multiple results, and uh, many times we criticized them, and uh, we drew certain conclusions, and Sergei is absolutely right uh, by saying that we have to wait until we get a final fine-tuning of the whole infrastructure. We should accumulate data. We should have a relevant uh, data lake. We should uh, uh, bridge the gaps in the information, uh, we, and uh, we should uh, re re remove those silos in the information, different uh, registers, different books, and uh, other things. We should combine it with the procurement practice, reflecting the real clinical practice, <clears throat> because procurement is done based on the requests of uh, real um, institutions, of uh, medical institutions. And uh, then by combining this information, we are able to calculate absolutely um, precisely the models and uh, expenses. The models were already described, by the way, already offered. But the question to select the proper one is not just uh, a point black question. It should be reasonable, uh, reasonable and weighed out selection. And different models behave differently, different sectors and different markets. Well, we all know that term, the best is the enemy of uh, the better. And uh, when it is about lives of people, the decisions should be proper. Colleagues, we should wrap up. Uh, the time flew uh, absolutely fast for me. Uh, thank you very much to you. What shall I note? Very positively, we have common things which we agree, and the job is being done, the facto is underway, and which brings us to the improvement of uh, availability of goods. Um, many thanks to you for your participation, for your time. We sit in a very nice uh, um, living room with a fireplace, and uh, uh, our um, discussion was with fire, along with the fireplace. Thank you very much for that, dear friends, dear audience. Uh, uh, stay with us, uh, stay with Gaidar Forum. Tomorrow we have the second day, a lot of interesting discussions. Thank you very much, and goodbye.